on the agenda for today. Um, we have YCSJ, which stands for Japan. Nagoya 2023. Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series Japan was held on the 4th of November 2023 and had 4,000 participants. I just want to point that out real quick. 4,000 participants in this YCS. And the even crazier part, the even crazier part is that in order to get into the Japan YCS, you need to go into a lottery to get a ticket. There, there were more than 4,000 people that wanted to play in it, but you have to like sign up and you, there's like a random drawing for you to get into the tournament as well, right? On top of all that, this is a one-day event. They, they, the YCSs in Japan are very, very different from the YCSs that we know because they are doing them in one day. And in order to get it done in one day, they do a uh, best of one. So no siding, just best of one. Which is not what all of the OCG is. It's the, I think as far as I'm aware... And if we have any any OCG duelists in chat, uh, feel free to correct me. But as far as I'm aware, the YCSs are the only event in the OCG that are like this, right? It's like norm everyone else in the OCG, every other tournament and so on and so forth. They all are best of three side deck and everything. It's just for the YCSs. I assume it's because they want to make sure they can have as many people enter as possible without having any issues in terms of running the event. They just make it best of one which is let's not discuss that decision right now it is what it is the only thing that it does mean which is something i do want to point out real quick uh 4, people eight rounds of swiss and then top 64 i'm plugging that into the top cut calculator right now uh eight rounds of swiss 64 player top cut 4,000 players you have um Roughly 16 people at 8 and 0, and you have 125 people at 7 and 1. And uh, this means the only way you can guarantee to get top 64 is by going undefeated in Swiss. Uh, the majority of the people that go X1 uh, will not make top cut. So 48 players with 7 1 make top cut, 76 miss. <laughs> so you have to win 8. The thing is, you can think of best of one whatever you whatever you want. Like, of course, yes, best of one is more variance than, than best of three or whatever. But if you could at least, like, lose one or two and still make top cut, maybe it would be okay, right? Because you could, you could afford to get unlucky once or unlucky twice. Or, you know, you get max seed once and don't have an out. The tournament doesn't end for you. But the combination of it's best of one and you have to go undefeated is is insane high variance to me like i that that does seem like a honestly if you're taking an event like this super serious you are just setting yourself up for frustration i'm gonna be honest with you like I, i'm sure people are still tryharding it but it must be so frustrating to go to an event where you know it's best of one and you have to go on un undefeated basically to win the tournament um but okay it is what it is and these are the results uh we have in first place Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye, Fire King. That's a lot of interesting words to me. That's a lot of interesting words in one singular deck. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, And it is not like an outlier. It's not the only person that played this deck at this event or topped with it this event. There's another one in top 8. Two of them in top 8, actually. So the, the Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye, Fire King deck is... Maybe something to look out for because we are going to get those cards in the TCG uh, relatively soon. I believe it's pretty much exactly a month from now that we get the Fire King structure. We already have a decent amount of the Sinful Spoils cards. Snake Eye, I want to preface, Snake Eye does get more support in the future, but not very soon for us. Like uh, for YCS Bologna, we will have the Fire King cards but we will not have Snake Eye at full potential, right? There is more Snake Eye support in uh, Phantom Nightmare, which is the next main set. And there is also um, indirect support for a deck like this in uh, the card called Bonfire, which is basically just Rhoda for Pyros, which I think we get that in, in January, right? So keep that in mind when looking at those results. Or when considering Fire King for something like YCS Bologna. But we're going to we're gonna have a more in-depth look at Fire King in so at some point in the next couple of weeks. Don't worry. 
Uh, other notable decks, I mean, we have Labyrinth in second place. Uh, the only Labyrinth in top cut, as I'm seeing it right now, which is somewhat surprising because Labyrinth is decently popular in the OCG in general. However, I will say Labyrinth in best of one. You know, you lose one dice roll and your opponent just combos on you. You know, <laughs> okay, <laughs> better luck next time, I suppose. So that can happen. Uh, we got Rescue Ace now also being paired up with the Snake Eyes. So, okay. Uh, we got Runic, which is uh, probably Runic Stun. We have Silent Force, which we've read the cards, but I don't remember exactly how much I liked those cards, but apparently it can do something at least. We got some Center, center Eon. <laughs> we got some Center Eon here. We got a Pearly, which is another case of Pearly is a pretty good deck in the OCG right now. But maybe in best of one, not performing as well as some of these other decks. Because there's definitely way more Rescue Ace. I mean, one, two, three, four Rescue Ace. Three Fire King. A lot of Sinful Spoiled Snake Eye decks in general. You know, like the majority of this top cut, almost half of top 16, is uh, some, some, some version of Sinful Spoiled Snake Eye decks. So that is something to note. Uh, we got Phantom Knight Horus here. And and that's about all the different decks that we have. And this is the deck that won it all. We got uh, Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye, Fire King. Uh, now, what I'm noticing right away is that it doesn't use a whole lot of the old Fire King cards, right? The only Fire King cards in here that I recognize as already existent before the structure deck i think is the field spell and these two guys right the the barong definitely existed this one is also already um right this one is like this one's came out a couple years ago this one's from like 2015 or 16 and this one is like also 20 2014 i want something like that you know those three those three are old cards uh and the rest is completely new right the rest is completely new as far as the Snake Eyes go, honestly, you they're calling it a Snake Eye deck, which I expected a little bit more Snake Eye in it, but we've got exactly three Snake Eye cards. We have this one. This is the newer one. This is the custom Snake Eye, and this is the Snake Eye Sinful Spoil. So we got three Snake Eye cards and a, and a Sinful Spoil package going on. Um, but yeah, we got we got a decent amount of hand traps. We got something for the maxi mini game, and we got the Fire King cards. Now, once again, uh, we've read the Fire King cards, but that was like weeks ago, uh, if not months, when they were first announced. And at this point in time, I I cannot really make a judgment on how powerful these cards are when they hit the TCG. We're gonna take a look at that in uh, in a couple in a couple weeks, probably shortly before YCS Bologna. We're gonna definitely have a stream where we take a look at the um, Fire King cards in a little bit more detail. Maybe play a couple games with it and reach like a conclusion on whether it's already powerful in the TCG or not, or whether it needs the consistency of like Bonfire and more Snake Eye support and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I mean. It, it looking at it though it definitely once we have phantom nightmare and bonfire it's definitely looking like it's a deck that you could play in the tcg right there's nothing important here that we don't have right we don't have maxi but that's it right no yeah, so that's interesting looking like a solid deck for um for A best of one event honestly like it's got uh, enough hand traps to not lose randomly to combo decks uh it's got like decent amount of room for non-engine so on and so forth it also is playing the new link 3 from phantom nightmare the promethean princess that is cool <laughs> and it's playing amblo whale boggers the amblo whale combo technology insane <laughs> Every fire deck is playing the Link 3. It is the, the Link 3 is a very good card for specifically um for specifically fire decks. Yeah, it is a good card. So yeah, that's the first place. Second place we have Labyrinth with one Arias. Uh I mean, there's not too much to discuss when it comes to Labyrinth in the OCG right now. We've seen plenty of lists play something like this. Uh they have this the I forgot the name of this one, but this one is also something that we get in um 
in January. But it does play the new this new trap card, which I uh, we read this like two weeks ago or something like that, or three weeks ago. Transaction rollback. That's that that's the name of this trap. Uh this is the trap with the with the Aluber mask in it. Um, which is now seeing play in the deck. But it is, it's not really like groundbreaking technology here. We just got one Arias, which is interesting to note, I guess. Uh, Rescue Ace. Now, this is very comparable to our format, right? Yes, they're playing, they are playing a slightly bigger Snake Eye package, right? They play the new Snake Eye from Phantom Nightmare. But overall, all things considered, this is relatively close to what we have in the TCG right now, right? So this is... This is relatively uh, easy to understand. The only thing that stands out here is that they are choosing to play two copies of Alert, which Alert is the one that is a Rota if you have the if you have the Hydrant on the board. Uh, so I guess that kind of works, you know, like that. They are playing the one of Reinforce, which I'm not a huge fan of this card. I honestly think. I think Rescue Ace already has enough one of bricks that you don't really want to draw. So adding the reinforce to it, I don't know if I like it, but it's like fine, I guess. They are not playing the field spell, which is interesting. Um, yeah, that's interesting to me. There's a lot of Droll and Lockbird in this best of one, which I'm noticing so far. I mean, two out of three decks were playing the full play set of Throne and Lockbird in the main deck right now. In the OCG. And even here, yeah, we're playing the we're playing the Princess and the Amblo Whale. We're playing the Princess and the Amblo Whale in this deck as well. Uh, we got another Sinful Spoils Snake Eye Fire King. Which is slightly different from the other one, you know, different hand traps. Playing Super Poly, playing this dude, which I don't even know what that is. Probably another new Fire King one of. Is Droll actually against Maxi? So in a in in a deck. So in a deck like Rescue Ace in the OCG, I'm trying to think. If you do after you do your first couple searches. You could theoretically droll your opponent's maxi and then just keep playing. Because something like uh something like Rescue Ace could ignore its own Droll and Lockbird a little bit, right? Sometimes you non-ironically droll yourself. Yeah, I mean in a deck that doesn't search very much past the first couple ads, you could um do it, right? I think Unchained was non-ironically drolling Maxi because it doesn't care. Yeah, Unchained is another great example of you could just play Droll in Unchained because that makes it so... I mean, if you think of it that way, if you're playing a deck that does not care about Droll and Lockbird, if you play 3 Ash, 3 Droll, 2 Called By and Cross Out, you have 9 outs for, um, nine outs for Maxi in your deck, where... Six of those outs to Maxi are also just hand traps, right? So that could be a good approach in a best of one Maxi format uh, to to do that. Now, however, now still, um, if you droll a Maxi, it is significantly worse than using Ash on it because your opponent still gets at least one draw. So you're going, uh, you're just going straight up minus one instead of going even if you Ash a Maxi. But, I mean, it's, it's you can't play more Ashes than three, right? So, and everyone is playing three Ashes already. Everyone is already playing the two called by. Everyone is playing the cross out. So, uh, if you if you feel like you need more outs to Maxi, I guess Droll could be something you can consider in a deck that is not hindered by a Droll, right? Uh, Razor59, think of it a four months. Mr. Church, think of it a five as well. Appreciate that. How good do you think trap tricks are in the TCG's format? I'd say more like tier two to three. Not phenomenal, but not terrible. Uh, yeah, more Fire Kings. We got the Pearly. Honestly, Pearly is as standard as it gets. They are now, uh, I think this was the most recent ban list that put the Delicious to two now. So now you only have two Delicious, one Sleepy. I think this is still okay somewhat, you know, because you still you can still reveal two delicious, one sleepy with my friend, which means you you get a guaranteed one of the two, right? 
you get a guaranteed one of the two good memories and then depend if you get delicious you go for the delicious line if you get sleepy you go for the sleepy line so the deck is still fine uh they're playing three traps because of um sleepy is limited so you have no guaranteed way to get to x purely noir so they they really want to you know do it this way and even though if you can resolve my friend pearly you are technically guaranteed to get a um to get delicious or sleepy you are not always guaranteed to um to be able to like if you have delicious that does not automatically mean you are you have a guaranteed noir because you need another quick play after delicious and you also need your opponent not to interrupt you like if your opponent um if your opponent chain blocks your because what you usually do if you have delicious in order to get to a noir you of course you make your 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 plump has delicious and the pearly monster as material so that's two materials you can attach two more with its own effect if you have two more spell or traps in the graveyard and so you need one more attach by plump's effect to chain to a pearly quick play spell and sometimes your opponent interrupts that sometimes your opponent like if they see you get the delicious memory they might let you go to the plump and then they just like you know ash your second quick play spell or whatever and then you can't chain to it to attach it and then you you might not be able to make a noir so hard drawing the trap just guarantees it it's like the easiest way to to get it also they're playing desire so sometimes they might banish their traps sometimes they might not have all three of these in the deck if they are forced to use desires first so this is overall a less consistent and um more risky way to play pearly for sure but it can still work right it can definitely still work. Uh, obviously, I mean, that's the thing. In order to get to top eight, think about this real quick. In order to get to top eight, most likely they freaking went like they went 8 0 or 7 1. Let's just assume they went 8 0 in Swiss. Then they won top 64, top 32, and top 16. That's freaking 11 0 until they lost. At least it's 10 1 in best of one which is still every single one in this top eight or higher has had an insane record honestly right majority of top cut is x1 to be fair okay even then okay then it's 10 1 uh 10 2 which is still you know that's a good record in best of ones that's still incredible uh we got more sinful spoils snake eye rescue ace be prepared to say that a lot moving forward you know be prepared to say that a lot if you thought Sinful Spoils Rescue Ace was a mouthful, uh, we're, there, you're going to have to add Snake Eye to that. Uh, probably in the TCG as well at some point. Uh, Centurion. Centurion is something we're going to talk about later today. Uh, it is interesting to see it perform in the OCG. Um, we're going to look at Valiant Smashers later today. And we are going to probably... So my plan for today is to is to do a little bit of everything as we're doing it right now. Like we're going to talk about we're, we're going to finish talking about this uh, Japan YCS. Then we're going to talk about the uh, Vanquish Soul coming to Master Duel. Uh, we're going to take a look at YCS Richmond. We're going to look at Bailey and Smasher's box opening, so on and so forth. So we're not dedicating a whole bunch of time to one individual topic today, but rather just have a little bit of everything. Tomorrow, my plan for the week is tomorrow, I want to take a super detailed look at Centurion. Uh, and I like I want to dedicate maybe even the entire stream to it, which is something that we haven't done very often in the past, I think. And I want to try it out and see how you guys like it and how, how fun it's going to be or how, how helpful it's going to be. My plan for tomorrow is I want to take a look at the Centurion cards. Uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna try and build it for the TCG because it comes out in like a week, right? We're gonna, we're gonna take a look at it tomorrow. We're gonna, we're gonna build it and then we're gonna test it against like meta decks where that's where I'm gonna play against you guys tomorrow. Like I'm gonna say like, okay, let's play against, I, we're go I, I wanna have like one match, maybe a full match even with side deck against like current meta decks, like one match against Unchained, one match against, um, Rescue Ace one match against Pearly, just to get a feel for how good Centurion is going to be when it releases in the TCG, right? And I think that's the plan for tomorrow. I think it's going to be a fun stream, uh, and we're going to see how it goes. But anyways, um, obviously, it's helpful to have 
um, Centurion lists from the OCG to get like a little bit of a starting point. Now they are combining it with Nadir Servant, which is interesting. I don't know exactly what that's for, but on I, like I said, it's been a while since we've read the Centurion cards. We're going to do it in much more detail tomorrow. We're going to do that in much more detail tomorrow, but the, the Centurion deck, I think, is a little bit dangerous for the TCG uh, because I it feels like one of those decks. It feels like one of those decks that was designed with uh, Maxi in mind. Right, because it, it's like super synchro spammy, I feel like, and has the Calamity combo with Crimson Dragon. So, I was hoping they would get rid of Calamity before we get those cards. Um, but yeah, like every once in a while, every once in a while, it feels like um, the OCG designs an archetype with the justification of... Ah, we can make this combo archetype a little bit stronger because we have Maxi in the format. That's going to balance out its win rate. And it works. It kind of works for the OCG, but it doesn't work for the TCG. Um, so that could be problematic, but we'll see. We'll take a look at those cards. More Fire King, more Rescue Ace. I hate what they're doing to my, to my Runics. I hate what they're doing. I hate what they're doing to my Runics, man. Troll Despair, man. Ooh, Silent Force. Now, Silent Force, it's the Rituals. I forgot what it even was. I, I remembered the name, but I forgot what it was. Silent Force is the Ritual, the Safira, Soravis, uh, and whatever the hell the third thing was called. I even forgot what it was. The archetype now. That is... That's cool. Skull Guardian, that's the one, right. That's cool. I remember reading those cards and thinking, yeah, those cards are really cool. I... I like this. I like the fact that they did well. That's cool. That gives me some hope, man. I love... I love whenever ritual archetypes do well. And when I say ritual archetypes, I mean actual ritual archetypes. Don't say... Uh, don't say Drytron. Don't call Drytron a ritual archetype, dude. It's not. I will not accept Drytron. Like, it's like, whenever I see rituals, I'm like, I love every single one of you. And then I look at Drytron and I'm like, except you. Except specifically you. What about Necroz? Necroz is one of the most base decks ever in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. Don't add me. Alright, no, this is very cool. This is very cool. The Silent Force cards, uh, the Silent Force cards are when I read them for the first time, I thought they were pretty cool, so it's nice to see them uh to see them perform. Another Nadir Servant. Another Nadir Servant situation that we got here. Alright. More rescue ace, and this is the the wet dream. Of every uh, of every Twitch chatter, Horus Phantom Knight, because every every time I make a tier list or I talk about anything Horus related, everyone is like, "What do you think about Horus tier, uh, Horus Phantom Knight? What about Horus Phantom Knight though? Huh? Horus Phantom Knight? Anyone? Anyone? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I I can't explain this. I don't know." This deck is popular at my locals. I mean, it's it sounds like it's a fun deck to play, right? It does. I, I'll, I'll give you that much. It does seem like it's a fun deck to play. And once again, getting top 16 at this tournament means they had to have at least like a 90% win rate in best of one or something like that on that particular day, of course. Now, they were the only person to do it, uh, but still, you know, it's, um, it's something. Now, I... Personally, don't really know what the huge appeal is of the adventure engine without Griffin Rider because it's banned in the OCG. So you don't get like an Omni Negate out of it. I guess it being technically you can make it so that like you it, it you can buy it, it can be a level three extender, it can be an illegal knight, which can help break boards. So if you're if you play a deck like Phantom Knights, which really doesn't need its normal summon, 
you can argue that it's fine to play the 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 the, the, the package uh they also are like the enchantresses are good discards for imseti and sarcophagus so it's i i kind of do see the appeal of it i i do see it it's obviously less powerful than if you had griffin rider and of course we're looking at an engine here where you play three Enchantress, one Rite of Aramis here, which is four good draws, and then you have an Illegal Knight, a Faithful Adventure, and a Draco back, which are mediocre draws, say to say the least, you know, to be generous here. So it's like a, not the greatest deal in the history of trade deals, you know, but it's fine. Uh, Illegal Knight is a level seven. It doesn't let you make rank eights. But uh, Enchantress being a level 3 extender is solid in a deck that, you know, plays Levier and Break, and break Sword. And that's it. That is the current state of the OCG, according to Best of One. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that this is the current state of the OCG in a, in a Best of One, right? But... Um, I mean, I think people people are still inclined. I don't think I don't think the majority of people would change what they um would change what they play in between best of three and best of one. You know, I of course certain strategies are much worse in best of one than they are in best of three. But for the most part, you know, I like I as an example, if they announced the next YCS in the TCG to be best of one, I think the majority of people would still pull up with uh, you know. <laughs> Unchained, Rescue Ace, Tear, and Pearly, so on and so forth, right? Uh, I believe Riot is semi-limited, but they chose to play one. Yeah, it's it's at two. It's at two. You can tell here from the symbol. It's at two, but they chose to play one, which... I mean, maybe it's not that important to draw. It's, it's much better to draw Enchantress because you can discard it for the Sarcophagus, right? That's probably the, the core idea of this is that you can, like do a couple of really nice things if you draw uh like sarcophagus plus enchantress you can like sarcophagus pitch enchantress send the horus monster banish enchantress get right of aramis here right of aramis here summon the token get fateful adventure bring back the horus monster trigger uh like you can fateful adventure to search the draco back then you can discard the draco back for the fa for the for the sarcophagus as well so it provides multiple great discards if you um if you open Enchantress, right? Which is much better than drawing right. Uh, Jane OCG, Meta, thank you for the four months and thank you for the continued support. Thank you so much. Draco back is banned. What is this then, Sherlock? What is this card right here? Tell me the name of this card right now or I'm timing you out. <laughs> Sorry, I meant the griffin. All right, I will forgive you. I will forgive you for doing a little bit of chat chatting.
Next up, 